Before I start this video, let me take 30 seconds to tell you something about Exergic. Exergic is India's most trusted and most experienced institute for online gate preparation. I am Chandresh Mahajan, founder and chief educator at Exergic. I am an All India Rank 37 in gate mechanical engineering, an ex Indian oil officer having 7 plus years of teaching experience as of now. These are the GATE 2021 Mechanical Engineering Toppers from Exergic. You can find their preparation strategy on Exergic's website. To know more about our GATE courses, you can visit our website or contact us on these details. Also, you can download Exergic GATE preparation app from Google Play Store. The link is available in the description of video. So from the previous example, we understood more about the concept of inclined springs, the vibration in inclined springs. And now let us move forward and uh, see another example, another beautiful example from that concept. Question says that a helicopter is carrying a crate of 250 kg as shown. Crate is any container in which something can be kept, just like we have crate of uh, uh, cold drinks, you can have a crate of eggs, right? So that, that container is called as crate. So it's a general term here. A crate of 250 kg uh, is being carried, is hanging on a helicopter as you can see. The dimensions of cables and crates is also shown here. You can see only this part, only this part has been shown here. That how different cables and crates are arranged, what are their lengths, dimensions, that is also shown to us. If the rotor blades of the helicopter are rotating at 300 rpm, you can see these rotor blades and obviously they are rotating. So they are rotating at a speed of 300 rotations per minute. Find the diameter in mm of the steel cables. All of these are steel cables and you have to find the diameter of those steel cables. Young's modulus for steel is also been mentioned such that the natural vibration frequency of the crate is two times of the rotor blade's rotational speed. Got it? So now question is asking you, asking you to design this cables. How much should be the diameter of these cables for this given material for this required frequency? Question generally looks, you know, as I have already told you, whenever gate gives questions with some practical things, like here, helicopter is shown, crate, cables, some practical arrangement is shown. Generally, students do mistake in these questions. Even though they might be very easy, just like this question. It's a very easy question, very doable question. But chances of mistake in this question increases if this is asked in those three important hours. Pressure increases and then everything looks difficult, right? But trust me, it's a simple, easy question, yet there are important learnings from this question that you can take away. So look at the dimension here as you can see this is one cable here of one meter length hanging vertically and then four cables are attached to this point let's say this is point P this is point O. So to the point P four more cables are attached which are then connecting to each end of that crate. Crate's dimension is also given right this is one meter this is one meter and this height, net height from here up to here, this is 2 meter, right? We don't require the height of the crate. That's not going to play any importance here because we are concerned about the frequency of these cables. So weight of this crate is going to statically balance that. So that is not going to come into picture. That's why height of the crate is of no particular use in this question. Now, what do you think? How can we solve this question? Question is asking you this size of the crate, size of the cables, right? Please recall the concept that we have already covered in the basics of strength of materials. That every deformable body acts like a spring, right? Cable made up of steel having a specific value of Young's modulus is going to act like a spring under the elastic limit. Obviously, we are going to consider the load under the elastic limit here. So even if it was a rod in place of cable, even if it was a proper structure rather than cable made of steel, made of this material, 
even then it would have been acted like a spring right this is something a concept of strength of materials which is used throughout the different subjects this concept is going to be used as you can see in vibrations theory of machines in machine design in fluid mechanics so this is such a basic core concept which finds its numerical applications throughout different subjects so here if this is these cables are like a spring because they are deformable within the elastic limit they can recover their elongation right so can we not find out their stiffness definitely we can find that out rather we know the expression that for such cases for deformable bodies stiffness is a e divided by l a is cross sectional area e is young's modulus l is the length right or not so if we want to find out the stiffness we need to find out the stiffness here why because question is asking you natural vibration frequency right in order to find out a relate frequency means question is telling that natural frequency of the crate is two times of rotor blades so rotor blade speed is given from that you can find out the natural frequency with which this system this whole system is going to vibrate the point is that to find that out to find out the natural frequency of vibration of this system you need the stiffness of these cables which are acting like a spring here right and that would be given by a e by l and length you can see something is given we can figure out the length area young's modulus if we know these things we can somehow find out the equivalent stiffness of this and we may think that this is just going to act like a spring like a spring right so that equivalent stiffness if we can find out we can easily relate that stiffness with the rotational speed and relating them together will obviously include a term of length in sorry include a term of area cross sectional area from which we can find out the diameter of the cables so this is a broad way broad path that i have showed you right i always encourage that even when i just complete reading the question explaining the question just pause the lecture and try to solve it on your own it will build your confidence it will uh, you know build your ability to think so even at this point i have also given you a road map of how to solve this question i would still recommend pause the lecture try to solve this on your own i am continuing this discussion so starting with the speed that has been given to us where is that speed this is the speed 300 rpm is the speed of the rotor of these blades of the helicopter and question is giving is telling that natural vibration frequency of the crate of this mass is two times the rotor blade rotational speed right we know the speed in rotations per minute right we can convert that to radian per second right 300 rotations means 300 multiplied by 2 pi radians per minute divided by 60 per second so this you are going to get in radian per second so you will get the omega of rotor in radian per second basically we are concerned with omega why because if we found out the value of omega we can then find out the natural frequency of this system that's what it is uh, telling that the natural vibration frequency is two times of rotor blade rotational speed right so always remember the basic of omega that we have discussed that how omega is uh, you know relating in a way the rotational uh, speed with the rotational uh, natural frequency right so rotational speed is something that we can calculate multiply by 2 then question has given you that that number will give you the natural frequency of this crate or of this combined system of cables and crate because they are going to have the same natural frequency they are going to have same natural vibration right so this is the first step that we need to do i have already done that part here that speed of the blade 300 rpm 300 multiplied 2 by by 60 10 pi radian per second is omega and natural frequency will be 20 pi of the crate and for the crate and cable system right as we can say for the crate because crate is like a mass in this right mass connected to spring so the vibration of that we are considering so that natural frequency is root 
k divided by m right omega n square is equal to k divided by m value of k you have to find out you have not calculated the value of k yet right i told you this we can imagine like a spring having a stiffness of k equivalent but we are yet to calculate k equivalent equivalent stiffness for this system right so here we will write it as k equivalent only so for this system the value of omega n square is equal to k equivalent divided by mass of the crater which is 250 right omega n is two times of this value just put it and get the value of k equivalent so as we have done here k equivalent is mass multiplied by omega n square mass is 250 omega n is two times of this number which gives us 20 pi square newton per meter take care of the units we are converting everything to si units so this is the value of equivalent stiffness of the cables that you are going to get 98.696 multiplied by 10 is power 4 i think 6965 will be coming here multiplied by 10 raised to the power 4 newton per meter now having calculated the equivalent stiffness let me come back to this having calculated the equivalent stiffness we now need to relate the stiffness equivalent stiffness with the area somehow right and as we know already know the expression a a divided by l right or not now for this wire for this cable only this part i am talking about one meter length it's very easy right length directly you can see one meter but for these inclined cables these are the inclined cables how many inclined cables can you see how many inclined cables can you see four one connected here this end third end and fourth end so to each and every end one cable is connected so total four inclined cables you have or in other words four inclined springs you are having here right for those inclined cables in order to find out their stiffness to relate their stiffness you need to find out their length also right because for them also we need to find out the stiffness then we will do some calculation to find the equivalent stiffness so their length also you need to find out right now you know this length this height rather right which is 2 meter but you don't know these lengths so we can do basic basic geometric manipulations right this is the only the crate the cable and the top surface of crate that I have shown you this is the top surface of crate that I have shaded like this and to each end the rope the cables are connected this height is 2 meter this is 1 meter this is 1 meter i have shown it from an angle na? it's some isometric view so this 1 meter and this 1 meter may not look equal but if you look at it from the top from the top view it definitely is going to be an square of 1 meter 1 meter right so this length let's say this is point p this is point o right and uh, this is this vertical line we have dropped from point O to the top surface which is of 2 meter. If I join this line to the midpoints of these two sides, right? If I show that here, I am going to get another square, right? This is half of 1 meter. This is 0 0.5. This is also half of 1 meter. This is also 0 0.5. So if I look at it from the top, this is 0 0.5 this is 0 0.5 now why am i calculating that because i need to find out this length right this is the cable inclined cable i want to find out its length how can i find out its length if i know this height which is 2 meter and somehow if i can find out this length this length right then this is the right triangle how this is vertical and this is horizontal in the plane of the crater both of them are perpendicular it's a right triangle in that right triangle this is 2 if i can find this out using the pythagoras theorem i can find out the length of this inclined cable right so i am interested in finding out this length the length of the diagonal so i am showing that from the top view this is the length of the diagonal that we want to find out as i told you this complete this complete length is 1 meter so this will be 0 0.5 this will also be 0 0.5 0.5 and 0.5 if you look at this triangle again i am reminding this is the top view of the crate 0.5 and 0.5 so this length how much will that be equal to 
root over 0 0.5 plus 0, 0 0.5 square plus 0 0.5 square right that will give you this length let's say x dash and after calculating x dash in this triangle this this and this this one you need to apply Pythagoras theorem x dash square plus 2 square whole under root right base altitude square them add them take the under root that is going to give you the length of this cable inclined cable right or not here I have shown a neat diagram of that a clear diagram of that a b c and d these are the four points that we are considering c is the midpoint of this length of the crate b is the midpoint of that length a is the center okay so this shaded triangle ultimately we need to see we need to apply Pythagoras theorem there to find out the length of OD. To find out OD, we need to calculate AD. To calculate AD, we are taking the top view. I have already explained this to you. AD is going to uh, be equal to 0 0.7071 using the calculation that I told you here. This is uh, A, wait, wait, wait. AC, AC should be coming and I think here I have written DNC in opposite way. Right, so from the top view, this C is going to be here, this D is going to be here. So AD is equal to root over 0.5 square plus 0.5 square. So AD we have calculated like this and now coming to this shaded triangle, root over OA square plus AD square will give you OD. The calculation I have done 2 square plus 0 0.7071 square under root. So OD length you have calculated to be equal to 2.1213. Makes sense, should be more than 2. Height is 2, so if you are inclining it from the same point to the same point, it should be more than 2. So in a way, yes, seems calculation seems correct. Now having find out, having calculated the inclined, uh, the length of the inclined cable, let us see how can we find out their stiffness. AE divided by L. For this PO also we know the L, 1 meter. For this inclined also we have calculated the length. This OD is nothing but length of the inclined spring, right? Inclined cable. So using AE divided by L, what we can do for K1? Let's say the stiffness of OP is K1. So K1 is equal to AE divided by length of OP or PO. Area we don't know. We have to calculate area. From that we will find out diameter. E is 207 uh, gigapascal. So I have converted everything to Newton and meter here. So 207 multiplied by 10 to the power 9. Length of PO is 1 meter. So 207A. Don't miss this A. Alright. This is also present. So 207A multiplied by 10 is to the power 9 Newton per meter. That is the stiffness of OP. And for the inclined cable OD, same AE by L we will apply. L we have just calculated. E is same, A is going to be same. We have to assume that. Question has not said that cables, all cables are having same diameter. But since it has given you a diagram, it has not mentioned anything about different diameters and it is generally asking what will be the diameter of the cables. So basically, indirectly it says that all the diameters we have to take as same. But please note, question may have given you different values, then you need to be careful. In this question, every diameter is same. Okay, so using that again, we have found out the value of K2. Please note, this is also having A, this is also having A because A is still unknown to us, right? So we have found out K1 and we have found out the stiffness of any one OD. OD is only single inclined cable. Na? OD is not representing all of the combined stiffness of every inclined cable. It is only representing its own stiffness, which is KOD. So we know the stiffness of OD, we know the stiffness of 1. What about other 3? Obviously we have to consider their stiffness also. If we go on to calculate the stiffness of this also, this also, this also, all of them will have the same stiffness. All of them are symmetrically inclined. It is square. It is square. Each of them are on a horizontal plane from the same point. So all of them are going to have the same length. They obviously have same material, same area. So all inclined cables will have the same value of stiffness. What next? We have found out individual stiffness. How to find out the equivalent stiffness, right? And for this, we are going to apply the concept that we covered in the previous lecture. 
This case is exactly like a case of inclined spring. And for the case of inclined spring, when the uh, motion and force is acting at some angle to the spring, we know that equivalent stiffness or rather I will say the stiffness along the direction of x, the stiffness of any spring along the direction x is equal to stiffness of that spring multiplied by cos square theta, where theta is this angle. The angle between the direction of displacement or force to the orientation of the spring. Right? We have already covered that, its derivation, its logic concept we have already discussed. So, for OD also we have to do that. For OD, the stiffness that it will offer along OA will be K multiplied by cos square theta. This angle is going to be theta, right? We can easily calculate that. Same for this, same for this, same for that. So, basically if I look at their effect along OA, all of them will offer K cos square theta stiffness and all of them will offer it parallel to each other, right? So, their equivalent stiffness, equivalent stiffness of all the inclined springs will be added up. The stiffness of single inclined spring is K cos square theta, of OD is K cos square theta. Same will be for this K cos square theta, same for this plus K cos square theta, same for this plus K cos square theta. Why plus? All of them are, are parallel to each other, right? Their, their vertical components are going to be parallel to each other. So, in case of parallel springs, the equivalent stiffness gets added together. So, equivalent stiffness of inclined cables is going to be 4 times of K cos square theta, where K is the stiffness of OD of any inclined cable, right? So, if we look here, as I have already told you, 4 K of OD multiplied by cos square theta. K OD is this, this expression. Again, this is something that we have calculated here. Theta, cos square theta, you need to find out the value of theta. This is the theta, right? So, look at the triangle OAD once again, right triangle OAD, right? This altitude is 2. AD, you have already calculated earlier, root 0.5 square plus 0.5 square, which is 0.7071 meter. So, this theta you can find out, right? Tan theta is equal to 0 0.7071 divided by 2. So, theta is tan inverse of 0.7071 divided by 2. That will give you theta as 19.4710 degrees. So, that theta you have to put here in cos square theta. Got it? Solve it. You are going to get, you are going to get this expression, this expression which is now representing K2, which is, uh, what is K2? K2 is the equivalent stiffness of these inclined cables. K1 was the stiffness. Let me show it here. K1 was the stiffness of OP. That's what we calculated here. And K2 is the combined equivalent stiffness of the four inclined cables which we are representing by K2. So, this entire section is having a stiffness of K2. And now K1 and K2 are in series, not parallel, series to each other. So, their equivalent stiffness we can find out by the basic expression that 1 by k equivalent is equal to 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 or in other words k equivalent is equal to k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2 springs in parallel. So, if we do that k1 value what we calculated this is that k2 value divided by k1 plus k2 right easily do the math. Again, upon solving this expression you are going to get this value with a, a is still here. Because in the numerator, you can take 10 raised to power 9 multiplied by A as common. But in numerator, you have two of these terms. So, 10 raised to power 9 multiplied by A. Suppose you have taken out common from this. So, this will cancel any one of them, right? One other will still be there. So, it's good for us, no? No problem. It's good for us. We want that if area is there, K equivalent is here, we can find out the value of area or the diameter. How? Because K equivalent is something that we have already calculated here from the data given in, to us in the question. That angular frequency, uh, natural frequency should be 2 times of the speed of blade, right? 20 pi. From that we found out how much should be the K equivalent for this section. For this section, how much should be? 
for this entire section how much should be the k equivalent right and that is something that we already know the expression for that is 98.6965 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 4 newton and now what we need to do this value we need to equate with that value which we have calculated earlier if we equate that question is solved a is the only unknown then and a is equal to how much pi by 4 d square find out the value of diameter from that basic calculation right so here we have equated that and uh, after simplifying you will get this as the area right in meter square i converted that to mm square and area is pi by 4 d square simplify you will get the diameter of steel cables in mm question asked you the diameter in mm so this is how you need to solve and approach the question again i am repeating the concept of deformable body is acting like a spring that concept comes from strength of materials right but this concept being related to a lot of other things because even in case of bolted joint if i talk about bolted joint in machine design we talk about this right equivalent stiffness of the bolt where again the concept of spring and deformable body comes so this concept is extensively used is extensively used in different subjects all of these subjects right like many other concepts which are related in all of these subjects including the mechanics the concept of spring and how it is going to affect the overall motion that in a way is useful in all of these subjects and this one question of vibrations tells you that in a very good way and it's a question which definitely can be asked any year in gate as you would have noticed every year the type of practical questions that are asked in gate like this helicopter crate cables right these types of questions are continuously increasing in gate so be open to such question and this is the uh, this is this makes you a real engineer to be able to model model a real life problem to an engineering problem and then solve it this is what makes you an engineer so don't fear from these questions it's very good that these questions are more and more asked in gate and keep practicing you will uh, get more and more confident in such questions